Hi, this is Nick Williford and Manos Perlakis presenting case 295 for the manual of CTO interventions. This is a case of hydrodynamic recanalization, HDR, after failure of other attempts. The patient was a young gentleman who had a previous stroke and a significant multivessel coronary disease with an osteal severe lesion of the circumflex, a CTO of the LAD, as well as the right coronary artery, as well as a, a flush osteal CTO of the right coronary artery. We can see here the LAD, which is heavily calcified, to fill uh, through ipsilateral collaterals from the left. He did have mild reduced left ventricular ejection fraction. However, he did have viability in all myocardial territories by cardiac MRI. He was therefore referred for coronary canalization, and as part of the planning, we obtained a coronary CT angiogram. This is the AI QCT analysis of the coronary CT. This is the straight MPR or multiplanar reconstructions. And uh, what we're seeing here is that there is a CTO of the proximal LAD with lack of contrast within the occlusion segment. The areas of blue are the calcium. And uh, what one can do in this particular software is uh, click on this button, which provides automatic detection of the CTO. And after we do that, there's automatic detection of the CTO, which is highlighted. And then we can use the measurement tool to measure the length of the occlusion, which measures at 27.8 millimeters. We can also use um, another feature of the same uh, software to better understand the proximal and the distal cap. So we do have significant calcification in the proximal cap, as well as significant calcification of the distal cap. And these are the areas where this corresponds. This is the distal cap in green, and this is the proximal cap in red. So significant calcium through the occlusion, but also at the proximal as well as the distal cap. And this is the MIP, or maximum intensity projection, and we're seeing here the heavy calcification of the proximal LAD as well as the mid and the distal. There's heavy calcification essentially in all coronary vessels. So the patient was referred for PCI, and our initial plan was to PCI the osteal circumflex as well as the CTO of the LAD. And we did not want to stem the circumflex before crossing the LAD CTO, otherwise we would have the ostium of the LAD jailed by a stent. What we have is a blunt proximal cap for the LAD. There is heavy calcium and diffuse disease. This distal vessel is filling through lateral collaterals. As we measured on CT, the length of the occlusion was 28 millimeters, and the LAD was filling through epicardial collaterals. Therefore, we did not have a good retrograde option, and our plan was to start with undergrade wiring and switch to ADR. The caveat being that uh, re-entry would have been very challenging because of the significant calcification. Because we're going to intervene essentially through the last remaining vessel, we decided to use hemodynamic support with an impella CP device, and then we placed a 7 French sheath through the impella sheath, and then engaged the left main with an EBU 375 7 French guide. We wire the circumflex, did multiple projections trying to clarify the location of the proximal cap of the LAD CTO. There may be a little entry into the occlusion. And then uh, we decided, as we discussed before, to start with undergrade wiring. Before doing that, because there was significant osteal disease in the circumflex, we did predilatation with a 275 millimeter balloon. And then that improved the stenosis, the patient was stable. We tried to advance uh, a guide wire into the LAD CTO. However, the wire kept on going into the ramus branch and the circumflex. It was very hard to engage this proximal cap. So what we did instead is place an angulated microcatheter, a Supercross 120. And then through that one, we tried initially with the Gladius Mongo without success, but then we tried with a stiffer wire. This is a Gaia next to. And after a few attempts, the wire seems to deviate from the course of the circumflex and seems to be tracking along the course of the LAD. This is the location. Of course, we want an orthogonal projection. This is the areocranial. 
And uh, here we see that uh, the uh, wire is dancing essentially with the calcium in the vessel. The next step is to switch uh, the supercross for a turnpike LP microcatheter. And then we tried uh, to knuckle a guide wire. We tried with uh, the Mongo, but uh, we had significant difficulty. We see here that the wire is just uh, um, buckling, but does not seem to want to advance further down along the course of the calcium that represents the course of the LAD. So after a few attempts, we decided to do HDR or hydrodynamic recanalization, which means we took a small 3cc medallion syringe and injected 0.5 mLs of contrast into the occlusion. We knew that we were inside the occlusion past the proximal cap. We don't really see much penetration of contrast going distally. Of course, this can be hard because we do have significant amount of calcium. But then we took another Gladius Mongo guide wire. And then what happened is uh, the wire fairly easily just went right through and then seems to be taking the course of a septum. How do we know? Uh, this is again the ipsilateral injection and the wire is striking nicely with the septum. And this is the eleocranial shot. And this shot actually puzzled us because we thought that the course of the vessel is uh, here on the left of the wire. So we thought that maybe we engaged an early septal earlier on before the occlusion. And we'll get back to this image in a second. But nevertheless, I mean, we knew we were in a septal. We decided to try briefly to see if we can go retrograde on the right, changing our original plan. The surfing, however, did not work. And then uh, contrast injection shows a very faint and fairly tortuous connection. So we decided to stop that attempt and then left the wire in and then decided to go back and try to do knuckling and dissection reentry. Uh, we took again another Gladius uh, MG wire. This is a dual lumen, Sasuke microcatheter. And we tried to knuckle the wire. Initially, it kept on going into this uh, septal branch, but eventually we see it catches and then... Um, uh, eventually, it uh, seems to track a little bit further down the vessel. And uh, this is uh, uh, an injection, again, showing that we are extra black in the middle lady. We then try to re-enter. We knew this was going to be a difficult task because of the calcification, but nevertheless, we tried uh, the stick and swab with various guide wires. Um, we did try to st stick with an Astato, a Horner 14, a Gaia X2, and then we tried to re-enter with a Pilot 200, but unfortunately, we were unable to get in the true lumen. The wire kept on being into the extra plug space. So multiple attempts, and we can clearly see here that the wire is extra black. At this point, it has been quite some time, and we're contemplating seriously stopping. But before doing so, we took the wire on the septal and just propped gently with it. And fairly quickly, as you can see here, the wire just buckled for a second, and then found its way into a branch that looks like a diagonal branch. And sure enough, when we inject contrast, we are into a small diagonal branch located at the distal cap. So we knew here that we had a wire into the tr true lumen in the diagonal, and then uh, we were able to place another wire back into the original septal. So now we have true lumen diagonal, true lumen septal, and we thought, well, maybe um, we can try to advance a workhorse wire over the dual lumen microcaster through one of those wires. So we put the dual lumen microcatheter uh, over the uh, septal wire and then uh, delivered it uh, close to where we thought was the proximal cap and then did probing with a workhorse guide wire. We did not really um, want to use uh, a polymer wire because this would be more likely to get into the extra plug space. So here we are moving the wire. It goes in different branches both back in the septal, back to the diagonal, branch of the diagonal. We're pulling back, and this is a two-operator maneuver. And uh, as we're doing that, the other operator is pulling back to do a lumen microcatheter, trying to recalibrate the position of the wire. And then all of a sudden, the wire finds this room and just 
flies down the coronary and clearly we're in a different place than uh, the extra plug guide wire. So with this probing maneuver, we essentially were able to track the true lumen of the LED. And this is confirmed with an injection. The wire is in a small branch, so we we'll draw it, and then we advance it down and it tracks very, very nicely to the distal vessel. So here we are. All these attempts for the entry did not work, but we were able to essentially do parallel wiring and advance the wire through a dual lumen microcatheter into the distal true lumen. We then predilated. Fortunately, we had a, a good expansion without needing an advanced modification. We placed uh, two stands uh, in the LAD, one in the mid and one in the proximal. This is the proximal one. And the plan was to do DK crash because we know how to send the stress complex as well. So we placed the stand in the LAD, crusted, rewired, did the first kissing balloon inflation, part of DK crash. And then uh, we were able to advance uh, another stand into the circumflex. I rewired the second kiss inflation and had a nice result with Timothy flow both the lady as well as the circumflex. And the same thing on the spider view. And I'm bringing back this original picture. This is when the wire went into the subpartner branch. And retrospectively from what happened, it turns out that what we are seeing here is not the true lumen. This is probably the extra plug space. It's an extra plug hematoma. And the true lumen is higher up along the course of this guide wire. So we were literally fooled by the appearance of contrast and we confused what was the true lumen and what was the false lumen. So multiple lessons from this case. The first one, is that when doing PCI through the last remaining vessel, hemodynamic support is important. In this patient, every time a balloon was going up in the circumflex, well, the, the, best main, the patient had essentially uh, no pulsatility. But the patient's mean pressure remained stable throughout the procedure with the support. Second, when there's angulation, an angulated microcatheter like the Supercross 120 can help direct the kite wire. We used the escalation with the Gaia wire, Gaia X2, but then as soon as we got into the occlusion, we advanced the microcatheter, removed the Gaia, and then de-escalated to a polymer jacketed Gladius Mongo wire. HDR was in the end the key on this case. We were unable to knuckle the wire, we did HDR, and then the first wire we put after HDR went into the septal. And retrospectively, it was in the true lumen, and then, although it took us a while to do the sexual entry, eventually we came back to this and we were able to advance a wire and a true lumen into the LAD. And this emphasizes the importance of careful and geographic review. Sometimes interpretation can be challenging and the wrong interpretation can be done, but sometimes with persistence, this uh, can be corrected. And then, finally, dual loop microcatheter can, can be important when we have a wire into a branch close to the distal cap. In this case, we had a wire in the diagonal and a wire in the septal, and then we went over both of those wires with a dual lumen and probed with a workhorse guide wire until the guide wire entered the true lumen of the LAD. Thank you.